Good morning friends, so uh, this is our second lecture and we are going to continue with our reading comprehension for our course English language for competitive purposes or competitive exams. Now, um, we did a couple of uh, passages last time and uh, you might recall that they were all from literature uh, to be more specific from Henry James's the portrait of a lady. Now, um, competitive exams and I am talking about the international kinds of competitive exams that test your English language, they often derive passages and vocabulary which may be related to all walks of life. So, it may be very useful if you would cultivate the habit of uh, looking up occasionally. Uh, some of these newspapers and uh, magazines and journals. So, writings from these papers and magazines, Nature, National Geographic, Economic Times, Newsweek, uh, Business India, Time magazine, uh, even New York Times. So, uh, all these uh, at least many of these are uh, free, freely available on the net. So, this would help improve your reading comprehension abilities and also develop your vocabulary and of course, grammar. So, these are all interrelated skills. We are doing a holistic way of learning the English language, not just learning the English language, the basics of it, but advanced and higher order language. So, here we go, here is a passage. Please take a look at it. Please read the passage. It was a very small shop in a shabby basement in a side street already doomed to decline and from the miscellaneous display behind the window pane and the brevity of the sign surmounting it merely burner sisters in blotchy gold on a black ground, it would have been difficult for the uninitiated to guess the precise nature of the business carried on within. But that was of little consequence since its fame was so purely local that the customers on whom its existence depended were almost congenitally aware of the exact range of the goods to be found at Burner Sisters. Let us look at the questions now. Look at the questions, please look at the slide here. What does the author mean when she refers to those congenitally aware of the Burner sisters? Now, congenitally is your word A, that the people who know them are told of them at birth, that the Burner sisters are known very well locally and need no introduction within the locality, that these people are told of the range of goods available at Burner Sisters when they are born, that sales at Burner Sisters were only to, to those so aware. What could be the right choice? Now, remember congenitally means by birth. So, it has to be the option B. The author here uses the word congenitally to refer to residents of the area who already know who the Burner sisters are and what kinds of goods are available at their store. The other options might sound right, but uh, you have to read the question carefully and only answer what it asks. Remember that is the way MCQs go. All options may be very, very close to the exact response. You have to be very careful you have to look at the process, you apply the process of elimination here. Now, um, you have to know that in option C, it is suggested that people are told of the Burner sisters as soon as they are born, which is impossible, right. So, C cannot be the answer. Although it uses the meaning of word congenitally, it is not the right answer and therefore, one has to remember that B is the exact response. And what is B? Look at the slide again. That the Burner sisters are known very lo well uh, locally and need no introduction within the locality. Second question, please look at the slide. 
what does the word uninitiated in the passage refer to? Option A ignorant, option B upstarts, option C layman, option D rookie. Now all very closely related meanings, but what is an upstart? What is an what is ignorant? Ignorant you know someone who does not have a, the appropriate uh, knowledge about something, but what is an who is an upstart? Upstart is someone who has uh, just come up re, uh, recently in life and uh, tries to um, push their way, barge their way into everything. So, um, uh, the behavior is not very well accepted in polite society. So, that is the kind of people are upstarts. Rookie is someone who is absolutely um, a newbie, should I, if I could use the word, uh, an absolute newcomer to something. So, rookie, a rookie sportsman, a rookie cop, you know, someone who has to be trained. Do you think these words are appropriate here? What about layman? So, the best option is option A, the word uninitiated means someone who is ignorant or inexperienced to the uninitiated, it is for the knowledge of the uninitiated. They are not ignorant about everything, they are not illiterate or uneducated, but in uh, uninitiated about a certain aspect, okay, those who are not in the know of certain things. So, to the uninitiated, if I walk into a room and something, uh, some discussion is already going on, then perhaps uh, someone has to brief me up on what is happening there. Um, so, you in such uh, or uh, on such occasions, we use the word, this is for the uninitiated, people who are not in the know, inexperienced or not in the exact term, but in the context of what is being discussed. You should also understand that the word layman refers uh, to those uninitiated into uh, people like uh, um, layman are those people who are not an expert in a particular area. Okay. In the context of the passage, we are uh, referring to those who are ignorant. Now, um, our next question is, I want you to pick out a phrase from the paragraph, which means of neg negligible significance, of negligible significance. Please look at the passage again, of negligible significance. What could be the phrase? The answer is, I am sure you have uh, derived it of little consequence, of little consequence means of little or no significance and comes closest to what the question asked, of little significance. Now, let us look at passage 2. The house of which Bana sisters had annexed the basement was a private dwelling with a brick front green shutters on weak hinges and a dressmaker's sign in the window above the shop. On each side of it, modest three stories stood higher buildings with fronts of brown stone, cracked and blistered, cast iron balconies and cat haunted grass patches behind twisted railings. These houses too had once been private, but now a cheap lunch room filled the basement of one while the other announced itself above the naughty wisteria that clasped its central balcony as the Mendoza family hotel. It was obvious from the chronic cluster of refuse barrels at its area gate and the blurred surface of its curtainless windows that the families frequenting the Mendoza hotel were not exacting in their taste, though they doubtless indulged in as much fast tediousness as they could afford to pay for and rather more than their landlord thought they had a right to express. Please look at the passage carefully. 
note down every word which you find difficult and practice it on your own. Now, let us look at the questions. First question, what is the purpose of this passage? First or A, to illustrate the suspect nature of the sister's establishment, B, to show the run down and shabby nature of the sister's neighborhood, C, to highlight the questionable character of the landlord of Mendoza Hotel and D, to show that the families staying at Mendoza Hotel were fastidious. Please look at the options again carefully. And the correct answer is option B. Why? Because the intent of the passage is to show the shabby neighborhood the Bunner's sisters live in. So, the author talks about the other buildings in the area like the hotel, but the focus of the passage remains the sisters house, the establishment okay? and the other buildings are brought up for discussion only to show the general run down nature of the area. So, that is why. So, it is not about the hotel, but about the Bana sisters establishment. Let us look at the second question. What is the landlord's opinion of the families staying at the Mendoza hotel? A. That they have pretensions to a respectability they do not possess, that they are too finicky, that they pay too much attention to the furnishings in the hotel, that they are very particular about where they stay. Correct option is option A. We have to remember that the author does not talk about the family's fastidiousness. Okay. This is the landlord's opinion okay. and it is the landlord's opinion is not this yeah, that the families uh, uh, are fastidious, but the landlord is more interested in that his customers expect too much for what they are paying that they want respectability for low rates. So, B, C, D are partially correct, but only A sums up the landlord's opinion. Look at the third passage now. But other and more serious burdens lay on her startled conscience. For the first time in her life, she dimly faced the awful problem of the inutility of self-sacrifice. Hitherto, she had never thought of questioning the inherited principles which had guided her life. Self-effacement for the good of others had always seemed to her both natural and necessary, but then she had taken it for granted that it implied the securing of that good. Now she perceived that to refuse the gifts of life does not ensure their transmission to those for whom they have been surrendered and her familiar heaven was unpeopled. What is the meaning of unpeopled? Please look it up. She felt she could no longer trust in the goodness of God and there was only a black abyss above the roof of Bana sisters. Spare a moment and look at the passage carefully. Startled conscience inherited principles, self-effacement. Okay, and let us look at the questions now. What is the intention of this passage? First question A is to illustrate how strong the protagonist's faith in God had been before a black abyss descended on the Burner sisters. B to delineate the various other burdens on the protagonist's conscience. C, to show how the protagonist's long-standing belief in sacrifice and humility had suffered an irreversible irre shock and D, to justify the protagonist's later atheism. What could be the correct answer? The correct response is option C. What is option C? To show how the protagonist's long-standing belief in sacrifice and humility had suffered an irreversible shock meaning of irreversible that cannot be reversed. You should know that um, while options A and B are partially correct, the intent of the entire passage is to show the collapse of some 
long standing beliefs in the protagonist life not just those two particular points ok. So, option D does not mean anything at all as the passage itself does not hint at atheism. So, do not derive to your or do not arrive at your own conclusions it is not there atheism is not there. So, please do not bring it in. Look at this line now this is the next question pick out the line in the above passage that shows how the protagonist had placed faith on the value of self abnegation. Look at the passage again. The correct choice is the fourth line self effacement for the good of others had always seemed to her both natural and necessary, but then she had taken it for granted that it implied the securing of that good. Now, let us move on to passage 4. For some minutes longer the conversation moved on at this desultory space and then Mr. Raimi who had been obviously nerving himself for the difficult act of departure took his leave with an abruptness which would have startled anyone used to the subtler gradations of intercourse. But to Anne Eliza and her sister there was nothing surprising in his abrupt retreat, the long drawn agonies of preparing to leave and the subsequent dumb plunge through the door were so usual in their circle that they would have been as much embarrassed as Mr. Raimi if he had tried to put any fluency into his adus. Let us look at the question now. First question, why did Mr. Raimi leave abruptly? A because he was in a hurry to get home, B because he had run out of conversation, C because it was socially mandated that he leave abruptly. D because in their circles awkward goodbyes were more common than sophisticated and subtle adieus. And what could be the response? Correct response is option D. We have been uh, coming to this that the sisters, Bana sisters social circle is not very sophisticated. So, in sophisticated circles it is a ritual to take leave, uh, but they do not belong to that circle. In this social circle elegant niceties were or are rarely exchanged in goodbyes and they were used to hasty departures in all their friends. So, that is the meaning and adieu, adieu is a word, it is a singular and adieus is a plural, goodbyes. It's an archaic kind of word. Second question, please look at the question here. The word desultory, exciting, nervous, awkward, aimless. Look at the context, look at the passage again and look at the, try to derive the meaning of the word in context. We will go back to the passage. second line at this desultory pace. Now, let us look at the options again, exciting, nervous, awkward, aimless and the correct answer is D which is aimless or uninteresting, desultory pace, aimless, unexciting, uninteresting. So, thank you very much and we will be meeting soon for more reading exercises.